Uh, hi, welcome. Hi, welcome everyone. So, <coughs> today we want to talk about the Navier Stokes equation again in cylindrical coordinates. So, previously, uh, yeah, we have derived the Navier Stokes equations for Newtonian incompressible fluid in Cartesian or x, y, and z coordinates. That's x, y, and z. They're called Cartesian coordinates. Yeah, so we derived in the x, y, z coordinates. And now we want to try and apply it, the Navier Stokes to cylindrical coordinates. Uh, usually, there'll be a, uh, you can search online, um, let's say, yeah, you, you look at uh, Wikipedia or you look for Navier Stokes, Navier Stokes in cylindrical coordinates. You can go somewhere like this Caltech. They'll give you what the neighbor Stokes equation in any coordinate actually looks like. Or maybe let's go to this one. This is a very, very clear way. You see the x, y, z coordinates are given here. Okay, this is an energy equation. So let's see. It should be, yeah, cylindrical coordinates. Yeah, compressible flow. Uh, incompressible flow, Navier Stokes equations. So, usually, uh, if you search it online, if you want cylindrical coordinates or spherical coordinates for that matter, you can just search online and you uh, put the link in the description. But a quick Google will actually find you the results. But usually, now usually you, if you just uh, search online, and then you can you can find this uh, the answers I've given, what the neighbor Stokes look like for, looks like for uh, cylindrical and spherical coordinates, but uh, most sites really don't tell you how to derive it. Okay, you, if you search hard enough, you can find, but um, usually the case is yeah, it's a bit harder to find. No full derivations. So today, just want to quickly go through at least part of the derivation for the Navier Stokes cylindrical coordinates in cylindrical coordinates, at least a continuity equation. Um, and of course, this is actually supplementary material if you are really interested in how to derive some of these equations. So I won't derive uh, everything, especially for especially for maybe this term, the viscosity term, uh, where you have the constitutive equations. Well, uh, that may or may not, I may or may not derive. If I have time, I go and derive it. If not, yeah. But today, I just want to touch on this, this one first. This is the continuity equation uh, for a constant density uh, kind of a system. So we want to derive this for a cylindrical coordinate. And then we'll see what the form actually looks like. Okay, eventually. Now, of course, if you want to uh, look at the answers, they're already here. 1 over r, blah, 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 blah. This is the what the divergence of the velocity actually looks like. But how do we arrive at this? We look, we look at this and we look at the z coordinate. It looks quite similar to the Cartesian coordinate system, but the theta and r uh, velocities, well, that may be a bit foreign. So let's just introduce, do a quick refresher of the spherical coordinate system. So we have the z-axis, okay, z-axis, then, well, we'll have some, uh, some uh, radius, We'll use the term R, or some system uh, people use rho. Then that will describe a distance from the, the perpendicular distance from the Z axis. And then, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> and then there'll be some uh, angle, okay? Some angle theta. 
Okay. Yeah, there'll be some angle theta. And that is the angle between <coughs> okay. Is this orange angle here? Between uh, uh some <coughs> excuse me. Some uh axis here and where R is being pointed at. Now what is this axis? Usually online you'll see uh, a lot of them. You'll see a lot of them referring to the X axis. And theta is the angle between the X axis and this R. But uh, in cylindrical coordinate system, you hardly see an X axis. So it's kind of arbitrary to me. But just know that, um, yeah, we we have these three coordinates. We have R, or some people use rho, theta, and Z. So these three coordinates define the cylindrical coordinate system. And what is our what does our control volume look like? So control volume looks something like this. Okay. Again, it looks like a box, but this box is slightly curved. So, it is distance r from the center. Okay, so let's say you, again you have a z-axis and some central location you have there. And then it's, uh, it's distance z from whatever origin we have. Okay. Let's say so is the origin is here and then we'll just call the distance from the the origin the z distance from the origin z and then it of course is angled at some theta. Alright? From this uh, imaginary axis which well some people we for convenience we just call it like the x axis, yeah. Okay. Or maybe yeah. So maybe you'll call this theta, right? Okay, so your r is here, and theta is in this direction. Theta is the going in this direction. Okay, and r is going from the center to this side. So what are our coordinates here? What is our length of this box, so to speak? So let's consider this length over here. Okay, the first one is very simply just R. If, if there is a if there is a uh, angle delta theta between here and here, this red length is simply R delta theta. Okay, 